Hello everyone, today we got a bitch of a problem. Now, if this looks like complete gibberish to you, what's standing behind me, good, you're in the right place. Okay, so what does this mean? This means that for every n in the positive integers, there exists a triple x, y, and z such in the positive uh, integers that also, this means including zero, such that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 14 to the power of n. How the fuck do we prove this? Well, fortunately, it isn't at hard, as hard as it seems. So now, let's start with the most simple case there is. When n is equal to 2. Okay, so we have that something squared plus something squared plus something squared is equal to something squared. Then the first something in the three, th three th first somethings can just be the same thing as the fourth something, meaning that this x would be 14 and the other ones would be 0. And then of course 14 squared is equal to 14 squared, so that, that works. And actually, if you think about it a bit, it works for all even ends this, this approach but we'll come to that later firstly let's just say that if well yeah okay sure we we can start with that we can start with that if we were to find a solution for any any n as we just did then we can guarantee that if n increases by 2, then we can just multiply all our solutions by 14, right? Because if we had that, okay, we have x0 and y0 and z0 are our solutions. If we knew that x0 squared plus y0 squared plus z0 squared was equal to 14 to the power of n, n0, maybe I should write, then we also know that if, um, if then n naught increases by 2, then that means that 14 to the power of n naught plus 2, that is then the same thing. Well, that's okay. Well, obviously, it's 14 squared times um, f 14 to the power of n naught, which is equal to 14 squared times x naught squared plus y naught squared plus z naught squared. And because we have squares here, we can just move everything in. So then therefore that would be 14 x naught squared plus 14 y naught squared plus 14 z naught all squared like that. So therefore, okay, we know that if we find a solution, we can find all solutions where we just add 2 to our n. And if we then know that solution, then we can add 2 again. So therefore, we can add any integer multiple of 2 after that. Meaning that if we were to have found a solution for 0 or 2 or 4, maybe, then we would have found solutions for all the even ends, and if we would find a solution for when n is equal to 1, then we would have found solutions for all odd ends. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Give me one second. So, I'm back. Where were we? Well, we wanted to find solutions for, let's say, n is equal to 0 and n is equal to 1. Okay, so the first case, n is equal to 0, we kind of already did, but, uh, well, yeah, we can do it again. So, no, sorry, we did before with 2. Yes, yes, we did with 2, then x was equal to 14. But as we said before, when we increased by 2, we multiplied the, uh, the solutions by 14. Now when we minus our n by 2, what do we do then? We obviously divide 
our answer by 14 and we're just going to make sure that works. So, okay, we want that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is supposed to be equal to 14 to the power of 0, which is just equal to 1. And here we can just say that x is equal to y is equal to 0 and z is equal to 1. Check. So we have that solution. And the other solution, okay, what is that? That is x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 14. We want integer solutions for this. Okay, what, what squares do we have? We have, okay, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is, three squared is 9, 4 squared is 6, 16. Okay, so that's too big. So we have to use 1, 3, and 9. And what's 1 plus 3 plus 9? That's fucking 14. Okay, so we know that gives the one solution x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2, and z is equal to 3. And now, okay, so we've, we've checked off 0 and we've checked off 1. And since we can add any integer multiple, multiple of 2 to any one of these, we have then therefore fixed 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on forever. So therefore, you could actually um, define, you could actually define a complete answer to this, to this equation. So as we said before, okay, so we have that our solutions would then, of course, be split if n was odd or even. So in this case, we'll start with when n is, uh, when n is even. What did we have there? Okay, so we have that, okay, we said that x was equal to y was equal to 0. Okay, so we can just write that down here. x was equal to 0, y is equal to 0. But what is z? Okay, so... We wanted that z squared was equal to something to an even power. Something to an even power can be extracted as something to some power all to the power of 2. And that something up there should therefore be n over 2. So z should be equal to um, 14 to the power of n half when uh, n is even, we'll write that down as, and here we have the other solution where n was, n was odd, what did we have there? Okay. Well, yeah, okay, so what do we do then when, when n, n changes? Well, all we have to do really is that, okay, we know that when n changes to we have to multiply by 14, so we kind of do the same thing, except we just subtract by 1 over there. So we have that x and multiply that with our original solution. So x is 1 times 14 to the power of n minus 1 over 2. Yes, makes perfect sense, uh, exactly. So that's just 1 times, so and it doesn't matter. So then it's four time, 14 to the power of n minus 1 over 2. This is my last piece of chalk. Please don't bully me. Uh, and y is then equal to 2 times that. So 2 times 14 to the power of n minus 1 over 2. And z is equal to 3 times 14 to the power of n minus 1 over 2 when n is odd and that is our complete solution and therefore proof concluded and video done thank you so much for watching the video hope you enjoyed it hope you enjoyed it sleep tight have a good day bye bye